Hello YouTube, happy June. This is my end of month, May 31st, 2021 video on gold and silver I picked up for the month of May. My name's Silver by the Ounce and every month I go over spot prices, what I picked up, what I stack versus I collect. So if this is your first time, welcome. If it's not, thanks for returning guys. Anyway, let's start with uh, precious metals. Silver ended the month yesterday at $28.40 per ounce, up $2.38 per ounce from April 30th of the previous month, where it was $26.02. So that's a nice return on silver month over month, uh, about 9% or so. So let's see if it continues through the month of June. Gold ended at $19.1963, up $144.03 per ounce uh, from April the 30th, where it was $17.75 and change. So same thing there. Um, silver was up percentage-wise a little bit more than gold, but both of them are looking pretty good. The one ounce gold to silver ratio, so one ounce of gold this past month equals 67.59 ounces of silver. That number is actually down uh, just over a half of an ounce, five-eighths of an ounce, let's call it, um, because the previous month it was 68.25, which means silver is creeping up to gold on a uh, one-ounce basis, um, and that means silver is rising. And you can kind of see that. Like I said, this was up about 9%. This one was up maybe 6%, I'll call it, so or 7%. So you can see the difference there. Um, that's a good thing for silver. So we want to see silver catch up to gold and gold kind of maintain its equilibrium price and silver start surging up, then this number will continue to go down. So that's interesting. Um, again, if it's your first time, what I stack versus what I collect, mostly items that I could sell quickly if I stack them or I want to exchange them for something else, bullion bars and rounds or another type of precious metal, buy it at 17, sell it at 39. I coined the phrase IDGIS, I don't give a shit about these. I do when I'm buying them, I want to buy them at the best price, but then I want to let them go. It's been very difficult to buy cheap silver. I don't know if anybody out there saw, but even the U.S. Mint said there's a shortage, uh, silver shortage out there. A lot of their recent um, items that they're releasing, uh, having problems with their website, and it's just a mess. So that bodes well for silver. Uh, what I collect, mostly items that I care about, sets collection and series. For instance, Libertad's, eight Reals coins, Britannia sets, the Queen's Beast, which just uh, closed up, essentially, the first series at least, and Chinese Panda sets. Um, and second and lastly, my 2021 golden stacking goals lower my silver cost average. Uh, I started the year ended 2020, started the year at 2363. My goal is to keep it under $24 per ounce. That is a feat. It means I'm going to have to buy stuff higher, but kind of limit what I buy. I want to get 106 and a half ounces of silver. That would give me 2,210 ounces by the end of the year and 1.5 ounces of gold. I'm about uh, a third of the way there. I got about a half an ounce of gold this year. And finally, finish and continue ongoing sets, Libertad's Queen Beast, and Chinese Pandas, as I stated before. So I'm going to start off, actually, with a, a story here. I bought a couple months ago this coin, as you guys saw. This is the 1861 AU55 uh, 8 reels coin. It's a gorgeous coin. You can see it right here, 1861 has the Libertad right in the middle. Um, and just for those that don't know, I'm trying to obtain the 1772 through present Libertad and eight real set. Um, and it is very challenging. It's very difficult. I'm gonna give you something that I have not run into yet, but now I am aware of it. It probably will extend how many coins that I need. So I bought this coin. Uh, it cost me $142 originally, um, $18.61, tough coin to get, tough grade. I want all graded coins, by the way. Anyway, long story short, bought this coin, super happy with it. In my book here, I marked it off, I checked it off, done deal. Anyway, 
long story short, again, I upgraded. I called it upgrading from a AU55. I saw this and I got it for $165. So this cost me $142 or $146, excuse me, $146. And then I saw the 1861 MS62 and it cost me $165. So even in my writing, I, as I was writing all of this out, I said I upgraded from this one to this one. And my intent was to sell this one. Stupid me didn't realize that there is a different mint mark on it where the 1861 AU55 has the TH mint mark. And you can see that right here, TH. Whereas the MS62 has the CH mint mark, which means a different person minted it, which means I need to keep both of these because if I'm getting the whole set, I need to get it with the uh, MO means Mexico City. So MO, you could see MO right there. That's the mint mark for Mexico City, but a different minter uh, minted them. So officially, I now need to keep both of these. So I have an MOTH and an MOCH. So <laughs> where I thought I was going to be able to sell this one and get my money back for this, and it would have only cost me $23 more to get an MS-62 versus an AU-55, which is a great deal by itself. The end result is now I just spent $155, and I'm keeping this one and this one now. So these are two different coins from the same year from Mexico City, which means I have to start going through every single one of my coins and seeing if there are multiple mint marks on all these coins, which means I'll have to extend my list here. And there you go. So you could see I add this one and this one. So what I'm going to do to make it clearer for me here is I'm going to go put an X here and put an X here. So I have two coins now where I only thought I was going to collect one, now I have two. So that is my deal for that story. Beautiful coins, that's it. So let's stay on the uh, let's stay on the eight reels. I got another eight reel. This, before I even show you the top, is a very, very special coin. So as you can see on my checklist here, you have 1823 through 1809. These are, Mexico got their independence and they started minting what's called cap and rays. And as you can see on this one over here that I showed you, there's the cap in the middle and the rays sticking out of it, okay? And then when I flip it, you could see, you could see the eagle holding the snake. I'm gonna keep it on that side for a minute, okay? So. You can see here, these are all, these are half. I'm up to 1861, I just showed you. Then I go over to the next page, and that's the rest of them, okay? All the way up through 1909, all right? That's it. So that goes all the way up to 1909. Anyway, long story short, the first one in the series is in 1823, and guess what? I got a graded... 1823 JM, that's the mint mark. You can see it right there. JM. Mexico eight reels. Standard edge flat top three coin. Very fine condition. 35. And this you can see right here is the coin. It has not been cleaned. It is the first coin in the Cap and Ray series, and I'm going to tell you it is very rare. And I'm gonna tell you why it's very rare. Because in 1823, there was the interim re leader, a turbide coin, Augustus I, and there was 1822 and 1823. So when Mexico got their independence, um, you could see 1821, Ferdinand the VII was on the coin, and I have all of them. Then the interim leader in 1822, 1823, his face was on the coin, and I have all three of them because there's a type one, a type two, and 
1823, and I, they're all graded. Then we go right into Mexico's first coins that they were minting without their physical, you know, a king from Spain basically ruling them. And that is the cap and raise. Uh, li libertad means liberty, so they got their liberty. And this is the coin. So on this coin also, you could see it's slightly different here. I'm going to do it this way so you could see. So here is the eagle in 1861. Here is the eagle in 1823. And as you could see on the eagle, it's called a hook neck eagle because you can see his neck is hooked and he's eating the snake. Whereas on the 1863, his neck is straight up. So this, my friends, is a very, very rare coin. Okay, so here's the deal with this. I bought this, I got this coin on eBay. I won the auction for $606.88. A lot of money for me to spend. But I had $155.88 in eBay bucks. So it brought my total down to $461 for this coin, $461. So as you can see here, I wrote it right there, $461. I get the honor of crossing this one off on my list. So that one is now crossed off, and that is a humongous pickup for me, gigantic. So gorgeous coin, very important coin in the series. So that guy is now crossed off, and that is what that looks like. So let's fast forward here, and let's move to the second, the more the ends uh, cap and raise, because right after this, they did something called Cabalitos. These are all the Cabalito coins right here, and then they went into the pesos. And you can see how many pesos there are up until present day. But the next cap and raise that I got was 1895, Mexico City, AB is the mint mark, AB right there. And you can see, and it's an AU55 coin. So there is my, I circled it. So now I get the honor of crossing this one off. I'm gonna check it off, cross it off, and there we go. So that one, and you can see I need a lot of these guys. I need a lot of them. So. This is an ongoing set, and this is um, kind of how we do it. So little by little, I'm getting them. So those are my four coins, one of which I already had, the AU55, so I got these three. And the last coin that I got, and this is my only silver coin that I got uh, this month, is the 2021 first release Chinese MS70 Panda. Um, and I got this one. It actually would have cost $59.90, but I used the remake. Actually, I bought this one first, and I used uh, on my other account, I was able to save, um, what was it, about $29.59 on this coin. So it ended up costing me $30.41. For this coin, it's an MS70. So that is my one ounce that I picked up this month. And you can see it here. I just checked it off. So in true fashion, I am going to, and I keep saying this over and over again, but I don't do it. I have to get my coin in order here. I have a lot of these that I've showed over the years. I just have to write them in here. This was kind of like a new page. I just haven't gone through my Chinese coins and I have to do that. So I will start uh, putting these all in here. But <laughs> you can see for the last three years, I just haven't done it. I think it was a little bit of laziness and I have to dig them out. I just don't feel like doing it. I have to be in that mode. So this is where I'm at in regards to my Chinese pandas. So I'm going to recoup this with you here. So May 2021, this is my 88th month of stacking. I didn't get any gold this month, none this month. In regards to proofs and other types of numismatic, which I do not count towards my official stack of silver, the 1823 I showed you, uh, my cost 461, although it cost 606.88. So eBay bucks came in handy. Bought a couple things that were not coins, and I used eBay bucks, and or they gave me eBay bucks, and there was like a 10% promotion, so we bought stuff. Uh, 1895. $82 is what that one cost me. 
for the AU55. And the 1861, you can see I upgraded, so I thought, but then upon realizing it, it's not an upgrade, so I said even there I'm keeping the 1861 because it's the MOTH, which cost me $142, and this one cost me $165. So my total, after it's all corrected, is $708 in, um, in just my numismatic coins, just in them minus this one. $708. Think about that. That is a lot of money, okay? Then this month, it cost me $30.41 for the Chinese Panda. So that's where I am with the Chinese Panda, right there for that puppy, right there. So last but not least, it's my monthly wrap up and you can see where I'm at here. These are all the eight reels coins that I put here and I corrected them all. My, I got, uh, my BU cost was $30.41 for one ounce. I'm only a $32, 30. 32.5 ounces of silver this year, and I'm five months in. Um, my total cost for this month was $30.41 for one ounce of silver. So when I take last month's total over the whole 88 months I've been stacking, I bring it down here. I add the 30.41 for that. It brings me to $50,758.58. Divide that by my new... Total silver ounces, I added one ounce, so 21.36. And it brings my cost average for every piece of silver that I have purchased that is not numismatic, but semi-numismatic or graded, such as this, like Libertad's, unchanged, $23.76. You can see the last three months is 23.76 and I have not bought a lot of silver. I bought five ounces, four ounces, and this month one actual ounce that goes towards my stack. So I am dead even this month. And that is where I stand. My goal was to try to keep this number under 24. I'm still there. I got seven months left of the year. We will see if I even make my goal for this year. But by the looks of it, I guess all the years of stacking cheaper makes me cringe to buy more expensive silver. But this is where I'm at. I hope you like my video. Like, comment, subscribe. And um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys have a great June. Happy summer.